Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing good. You all are safe and healthy at your home. I'm Mrs. Sudhima Vashistha and today we are meeting for our social science class. In today's class, the chapter that I'll be taking up is Socialism in Europe and the Russian Revolution. If you can remember, in our last chapter of history, we talked about French Revolution and in, and in the, this chapter we'll be talking about the Ru Russian Revolution and how socialism emerged in Europe. All right, so I have uh, prepared a few uh, few slides on this on the topics that I'll be taking up. All right, as I said, the chapter is socialism in Europe and the Russian Revolution, and the topics that I'll be covering in today's lecture is the age of social change, then the liberals, the radicals, and the conservatives, and the industrial society and social change. So let's uh, move to the first topic and, your, and from your today's class, your learning outcome will be, you will be able to understand how French Revolution gave the spark for the change in the society. How because of French Revolution, the different, uh, the, in other parts of Europe also, there was a ripples of change. And you will also understand who were these groups of people known as the liberals or the uh, radicals and the conservatives and what were their ideas of each group and also you will be able to acquire acquire knowledge how industrialization how after the coming of industrialization there was a social and economic change in the society now let's get first started with the first topic that is the age of social change so what does age of social change means is that, as I said, when French Revolution started, if you can remember, when Louis XVI was the king, and when the people of the third estate, they, you know, they revolted and they took the step to remove monarchy from France, how, you know, how parliamentary government came in France, and again, there, there was dictatorship, again, there was monarchical rule in France, so there was a lot of shift from you know uh, governments shifts of government in france but there was a change the main the the basic important thing is there was change in france people revolted people rose their voice against so against an established rule right so french revolution gave us the basic ideas of liberty it talked about equality right and it talked about justice right so uh, the in the, so uh, it was the french revolution which gave the first kick or the it gave the rather you can say it gave the spark for you know to bringing about change in other parts of europe also so france so france french revolution from that people got the strength to bring about certain change in the society so it, that is why it is said that the, uh, that the french revolution it opened the possibility for changes in the society how it was structured all right it was like society like it was always the kings were ruling it was a dynastic rule right the kings will rule then the son then the grandson it was the, even though that uh, even though someone is capable or not that uh, the dynastic rule was there right so but the french revolution when people started to revolt when people started to talk about it discuss about it then there was change was seen right and it was and it became and uh, french revolution it showed us this beginning point for changing the society got it and also at the time uh, uh, you you if you can remember in the french revolution uh, there, uh, before the 18th century the, there was this estate system where the society was stratified right there was the clergy there was those nobles and there was this third estate people right but but it was possible that structure got changed. Uh, the, it was possible. Why? Because people revolted against it. Because people got together, they revolted. They tried to bring a change in the society, right? And because of the, that change that France witnessed or that French Revolution brought, it gave a strength or you know power to you know or, or it 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 gave a paved the way. It paved the way for many European uh, countries to you know to bring about change in their society also all right but even though in other parts of europe the effect of french revolution was seen where well, people wanted change but there were also some section of people who did not want it change at all like they wanted to stay the society the way it was all right and so there was difference of opinion between different groups of people and uh, 
so there were these groups of people known as the radicals the liberals and the conservatives from the word liberals now we, now we'll be seeing the next part of our our lecture now who were these liberals radicals and the conservatives and what were their ideas uh, so from the word itself you can understand liberals are someone who who were liberal like who were a bit open minded like they wanted change all right and radicals were someone who wanted radical change like you no know, quick change like uh, overnight only they they wanted to bring about change but uh, in in that way and conservatives from the word itself you can understand conservatives uh, will be a group of people who were con conservative in their thoughts who did not want any change at all now we'll be looking into details about each of these groups of people and about their ideas in our next part all right the first one is the liberals as i said the liberals were a bit open minded and they wanted to bring about change in the society what what were the uh, principles that these liberals hold the liberals wanted a society or a nation where all religions were treated equally where every religions were tolerated all right it's not that only you are preferring to only one religion but rather where all religions are given importance then secondly the the liberals also opposed a, a system of dynastic rule like as i said the monarchical rule the dynastic rule where the king will be there and the king's son the grandson the generations up to generations the you know within the same family the rulers will be there even though they they are capable or not so liberals were against that uh, uncontrolled power of dynastic rulers they did not want they, they wanted to bring in and to it got it then also they wanted to safeguard thirdly they wanted to safeguard the rights of the of the common people of the individuals all right how they wanted to safeguard they they wanted to have a parliamentary form of government all right they urged for a representative or a parliamentary form of government where they will be independent judiciary all right and that 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 was independent of rulers and officials all right it's it's not that i know judiciary is controlled by someone but it has to be independent judiciary who which can give justice to the people got it if you can remember in french revolution if anyone went against the government they were imprisoned for life you know they were killed right so it should not so liberals were against it so they uh, uh, urged for a representative form of government or a parliamentary form of government so that they could protect the rights of the common people of the society and also they urged for a judiciary which is independent got it but however these liberals were not democrats now what do we mean by that democrats now who were democrats democracy means a where you have the everyone every single individual has the right to vote but the liberals they did not want to give the right to vote to everyone rather they said that they were supportive of the fact that only those people who had property or those people who were wealthy they should be given the right to vote all right that is why it is said that the liberals are not democrats that why because they they did not want right that the right to vote should be given to every single individual rather they only supported the right to vote for the property men only the men even the women were excluded from it the only the property men will be given the right to vote so these were the basic ideas or principles of the liberals who wanted change in society but the, and these and what kind of change we got to know they wanted tolerance of religion they wanted to safeguard the rights of the indi uh, common people by and uh, through uh, a representative or parliamentary form of government they wanted an independent judiciary right and also uh, they believed in uh, de uh, and but and lastly we got to know that these liberals are not democrats why because they did not supported the right to vote for all the people rather they only supported the right to vote only for the wealthy people or those people who had property now let's move to the next group of people that is the radicals now let's see who are the radicals now radicals now now let me mention you here the liberals are basically from the upper middle class people all right and the radicals were from the lower strata of the society all right so definitely it was the radicals who wanted to bring about you no know, radical change all right you no know, a uh, 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 a whole change in the society and these radicals were against like their ideas are also not same with the liberals they opposed the liberals what did they oppose they they said that they wanted a government which is 
by the majority of people that means they wanted they supported the right to vote a government which is supported all by the people it's not that only one section of the people will support the government as the liberal said like the liberal said that only the property men will choose the government but for the radicals no it should be a government which is cho chosen by the majority of the population all right and also most importantly the radicals supported the women's suffragette movement suffragette movement we understand that the movement which was started by the by the women to get their right to vote all right and also the liberals were uh, the, the the radicals were against the idea of private property all right uh, like the like you no know, they, they opposed the privileges of landowners or factory owners now why landowners you can understand those who have lot of land right so the radicals were of the opinion that if there will be lot of landowners that means what lot of prop like one landowner will have so many land uh, within like uh, in in his property and, and under him many of the people will work so there will be a lot of exploitation so it will be like only property will be uh, in the hands of a few and those men only that section of people will be getting poor richer and richer while the while the poor people while the other people who, who, are, who do not have any property they will be getting poorer and poorer so the radicals believe that if there is this private ownership or this land uh, this landowners or this factory owners then there will be more of disparity between the rich and the poor all right but uh, they had, like they were not totally against uh, they, they were not, uh, not totally against the existence of private property but they were not supportive of the view of the idea that uh, you know property should be only in the hands of a few all right they were oh, uh, they were of the idea that fine pro private uh, private property should be there but it should be equally distributed it's not that only uh, a few section of the people are enjoying it while another section is like totally poor and one section is very rich another section is totally very poor all right so they so these were the opinions of the radicals so what did we know about radical students that that the radicals are those group of people they were they supported of the uh, right to vote that they uh, they supported about uh, a government which is chosen by the majority of the population of the country and they supported women's suffragette movement also and they were against the idea of great landowners no those uh, ha having lot of only one section of people having property but they were not totally against private property but they were against the idea that it should not be concentrated only on a one section of population why because if we, if we are doing so if property is only on a certain section in that way we are creating more disparity between the rich and the poor all right now let's move to the next group the third group is the conservatives now the conservatives from uh, from the word itself as i said they are the conservative people who did not want any change now who will be this conservative definitely somebody who is ruling right now let's say for example uh, if a government is ruling uh, definitely that government will be the conservatives because they will not want any change because they are the one who is ruling right so if anyone will want to bring the change their position will become shaky right so similarly was here in europe also so conservatives were those a class of people who were ruling basically the kings all right or the aristocrats so the so these were the section of people who fell under the category of of conservatives why because they did not want to have, bring about any change they wanted to uh, leave the way it is all right but at the same time the conservatives also got to know in the french revolution only that when they saw that people were revolt, uh, uh, revolting against the existing monarchical rule they also got to know that change is now inevitable like they cannot stop change change has to come right that is why the conservatives uh, even though they opposed they, they were against the idea of bringing about change but later on after like by the 19th century they also accepted that fine change will come they cannot stop it but they just said that even though you want to bring change try to bring change in a slow process it's not that overnight we are removed from the throne and you know no monarchy you know they don't like abruptly do not stop the uh, bring about change rather they suggested that 
change should be a slow process and also change should be brought in such a way that people remember uh, keeping in mind or respecting their past it should not be like nobody remembers uh, what happened in the past who ruled in the past all right so the conservatives wanted that fine that they also knew that now change will have to come nobody can stop change because during french revolution only they saw it right because louis 16 was removed so after that also so that is why the, the conservative said that fine if you want to bring change that is okay but do not bring the change like quickly like bring, uh, like make it a slow process and also keeping the uh, the process should be kept in mind in such a way that uh, uh, the past is respected uh, so you have understood what the conservatives who the conservatives were basically they were against the liberals and the radicals and they also thought that and they did not want to bring any kind of change in the society but slowly towards the 19th century they also thought that change is inevitable that they cannot stop change that is why they suggested that that if you want to bring change also bring it in a slow process it should not be a very a quick process all right and it should be kept the change should be brought keeping in mind the respecting the past all right okay so these were the ideas about the radicals liberals and the conservatives now let's move to the next topic that is the industrial society and social change now we all know that after that when industries were not there from you know right from past all right there, there was a certain period from where industry started to emerge so that period was known as the industrial revolution which brought about industrialization right so this period in europe was a time for change there were a lot of political change happening social change happening economic change happening all right at that time new cities came up with the coming up of new cities the communication new communication came up like you know railways were improved uh, technology got improved so during this time only like in the 19th century only the the industrial revolution also occurred so this was another uh, uh, change bringing uh, revolution in the society where lots of industries emerged where the uh, social and economic structure of the society began to change but with the coming of industrialization we know that many industries came up industries brought with it employment opportunities so many women children and men they started to work in the industries but there was also a dark side of this industrialization what was the dark side there was child labor right children of very lower age they were made to work in the industries then there was uh, the workers were made to work in very low wages they were not given proper wages and not very good conditions the conditions of work was not good they were made to work for more hours with less pay but more hours working hours right so the and also there uh, the, there was unemployment why like even though industrialization brought uh, op uh, employment opportunities there was unemployment why is it so because you know uh, this uh, industries owners the, they will just employ this men or women or children for a certain period and whenever they will feel like removing them they will be removed from their job all right it was not a secure job so whenever the owners will feel like you, uh, that they are not required in the job then they will be removed from the job so that so in that way unemployment was also very high at that point of time and there was also people population was more uh, people were more but there was no housing facilities there was no proper sanitation fa facilities so there were lot of problems that uh, which industrialization brought along with it so this was the disadvantage or the dark side of uh, which industrialization or industrial revolution brought with it so the liberals and the radicals they thought that they should Uh, think of a solution to all these issues they should come up with certain solution for all these issues so uh, the liberals and the radicals were also often property owners all right it's not that they were just workers but they were also property owners and employers so they thought that only if they give good working conditions to the laborers 
only then they will get a very uh, healthy workforce, right? They also thought about their own benefit, like you know, only when they will give good working condition, a good pay or less working hours, only then they will be, uh, they will feel that, you know, uh, the, they will also get workers to work for their own factories or industries. As I said that the liberals and the, uh, the radicals were also property owners. They also had some few uh, few properties in their hands. So they thought that um, have uh, like uh, they should encourage first bringing change, you know, improving these conditions. All right. Only then, only when these uh, problems are sorted, they will also be benefited. So now the liberals and radicals were also thinking about their own benefit. They thought that only when the workforce is healthy, educated, only when they, they, the society will also be a healthy society. <clears throat> now, opposed to the privileges of the old aristocracy, old aristocracy means the rules of the, the old system, the, the kings and the, those of the rule of the kings and all. Uh, the, the opposed to the old aristocracy, the radicals and the and the liberals, they believed in individual effort. They believed in labor. All right. They believed that if freedom was given to the individual, if labor is respected, and if and if you know too much power is not given in the hands of the uh, only a few, then the society will be a more healthier society. So the radicals and liberals were of were both of these of, of this opinion. And therefore, many uh, working the working men and women they also supported the liberals and the radicals group. They also joined hands with them, joined their groups to bring about change. All right, in the nineteenth century. All right, then some nationalists. Some nationalists also. Now, who are the nationalists? Nationalists are those people who talks about their own nation. Like you know, Mahatma Gandhi who is the father of a nation, he was also a nationalist because he talked about our nation, he fought for our nation, right? So those like, they were also nationalists and they were liberals, liberals who understood who were the liberals and the radicals. Now they started a revolution to bring about a change in the society to end the kind, to end, to bring an end to the type of government which was uh, established in Europe in 1815. 1815, you can remember, it was in French Revolution, it was the rule of, um, uh, you know, uh, that, that was established. It was the rule of uh, Napoleon Bonaparte. So after 1815, it was basically the kings who, who came again and, and started to rule. All right. So, so basically, the liberals and the radicals and the nationalists they wanted to bring an end to the, that old system of government. All right. So, uh, in France and in many places of Europe, like France, Germany, Italy, Russia, they became revolutionaries. Revolutionaries means you understand who brings a gradual change. All right. So, the nationalists, liberals, radicals, you can say that that they are a group of revolutionaries because this group of people were fighting to bring about change in society by overthrowing the monarchs. They wanted to overthrow the monarchs, all right? And the nationalists, they will all, they talked about revolution. They, so, so many discussions have taken place about equal rights. So in this way, the common people were also, they also became aware to fight for their own rights, all right? So in after 1815, Giuseppe Muzini, so who was Giuseppe Mazzini? He was an Italian nationalist. He also, uh, he fought strongly to achieve, you know, to break this old system of, or this old aristocracy. And he fought and he tried to achieve this in Italy. All right. And uh, about Giuseppe Mazzini, uh, he is a very famous nationalist and his, uh, his ideas and principles are known all over the world, also in India. All right. So this was the about industrialization, how coming of industrialization or industrial revolution brought about change in the society. All right, students. So in today's class, we have uh, understood how French, firstly, we read about how French revolution was gave the first kick to bring about change in different parts of the world in, in Europe, right? And we got to know about the ideas of these three different groups of people, that is the liberals, the radicals, and the conservatives. And then lastly, we understood how industrialization brought about social change in the society. Uh,
all right students so with this we come to the end of our today's chapter or the today's topic in next class we will meet with another new more topics till then everyone take care and thank you